Hello everyone. Well, I've reached that mythical state of the joy of oscillation. As you know, I've been helping out Bill and Dean, Bill of the Solder Smoke Podcast. They're building a direct conversion receiver as a uh, uh, as a project for high school, and they're asking for uh, people to build it. So so far, here is the uh, my implementation of part of this. So far, I've only completed the the PTO, which is here, and here's my schematic which is based on theirs, of course. I'm trying to build this as close as I can. Uh, the only changes I've made is I've put a um, reverse protection diode uh, to prevent any kind of mishap if I uh, inadvertently apply reverse polarity to the circuit, which occurs to me on a regular basis. So <laughs> I've adopted this. And uh, with that, here is the uh, here's the board that I built. It's built on a uh, tin plated steel sheet, but you could easily put this on copper clad. No big deal. And I also make up my own version of a little terminal strip here just to make uh, wiring easier. And I found out years ago that uh, if you use these solder pads and try to solder a wire and you got another wire, it will pop off and so on and so forth. So I just made terminal strips as my tie points. And as part of the testing, um, since I only had this built and none of the other pieces, I had this old uh, circuit I have here. It's a uh, 27 megahertz oscillator and a diode ring mixer soldered up on the bottom of a uh, instant iced tea container. Was, these make really good um, tin plated uh, bases. So I just had have, have one laying around. So I put this together years ago just to have something. So what we have here now is That is the oscillator, or the PTO of the uh, solder smoke direct, direct conversion receiver, and I got it tuned to uh, 7250 or thereabouts kilohertz or 7.24 megahertz, just to have something to test with here, and I have my uh, my. Uh, Max SSB, which is over here, used to be called the ZX SSB. The Max stands for Modular Amateur Transceiver, but that gives me something to uh, test with. Since I have this um, available, so I just go ahead and use this as testing, so I can hear the, the tone as I tune it here. And of course, this isn't ideal. Everything's open, and I'm using the the, uh, the crudest possible PTO coil there is. It's wound on a uh, McDonald's drink straw. I believe that's 22 turns, and uh, I just kind of rigged up a way of. Uh, allowing the, the screw to go in and out, the brass screw. Okay, so um, this is the waveform with it connected to a mixer, which is down here. That's the mixer circuit that I'm using. Okay, so the idea is if this thing actually works, I should be able to mix my 27 megahertz 
that's also a PTO, but it doesn't have any uh, anything in the, in the coil here. I should be able to mix my uh, 27 megahertz with my 7.2 megahertz and get something like two frequencies, uh, which I've written down here just to give me something to reference. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and uh, connect the power. All right, so that's, now there's the waveform on the mixer, so that's going to be the, uh, all the different frequencies bouncing around. That's the output of the PTO. So let me go on to the uh, output of the mixer itself, which is right here. And that's kind of what we would expect. Sort of a really ugly looking thing, but hidden inside that complexity is the two frequencies and probably a many dozens of more dozens of additional frequencies so with my siglent oscilloscope it has some crude spectrum analyzer yes yeah, spectrum analyzer capability so at least i can uh let's bring this up on uh, something to see here all right, so before we get to that, let's get this back on frequency. It drifted a little bit when I connected the power. I'm not sure. I think it, it's the power supply is pulled down a little bit. There's, it's going to affect it. And it drifts a lot because one of the other problems I have is I just pulled these these two caps here out of my junk box, and they're probably not. Uh, they're, I know they're not NPO. They're not temperature stable caps, so they're going to drift everywhere just by blowing on the circuit. It will will change. There's my 7250. Now, if this works, I should have something at around 19.9 megahertz and 34.4. So let's go to And I'm using my Max SSB. I just have the uh, the bandpass filter jumped out, so it's wide open. But this gives me something to uh, check frequencies. And since the Max SSB is uh, linked to satellite, I know that it's frequencies within a couple, couple of hertz. Okay, and now we should have something at 34, 468. Thereabouts, 468, yeah, all right. 463, I must have bumped something or it's a little off here. Now, if that's true, 
I should be able to see if I go to wrong one here. There's our first big peak. And that is at, uh, oh, wrong one, I'm off a bit here. And it's right around uh, 19.9, and this, this, this is not really a spectrum analyzer per se, so it's gonna be uh, a little bit out. But you do see a peak there around 19, or around 20 megahertz, and then we should have another one around 34. There's, uh, there's the 34. We also got a lot of other things going on here. What's this one here? That's a 20. Oh, that's okay. There's the uh, the uh, second oscillator that's going into the mixer. I'm getting products of that 27. And then I should be able to find the seven megahertz. Is that down here? Now that's 13. Let's see, where's the seven? If it's making it through at all. Yeah, there's a little peak right there. And again, this is a, like I said, really crude. It's a FFT spectral analysis, so it's a, not real accurate. At least not on this particular resolution I have it set for. Anyway, that's interesting. So thank you, Bill and Dean, for a great little project. I hope to get the rest of the modules built up. And uh, there's the first one done. Once I get a more appropriate uh, PTO coil and better capacitors. Now I built one before a couple years ago. Let's see. If I can get this one up in the frame. All right, this was built. This is another PTO that I built back in. Uh, what was it twenty? Yeah, September of 2014, where I built a little form here out of uh, out of uh, what they call masonite or hardboard on my scroll saw. This one here is really stable and it tunes very well. So I should do something like that. And matter of fact, that's where this brass screw came from. I just unscrewed it from the uh, from this. Okay. 7-3 everyone. Have a great day. N3 FJZ.